Hello and welcome to Safe Pasture. My name is Sherry Hammers and we are continuing through the book The Holiest of All by Andrew Murray with chapter 24 and it's got a very simple title and hopefully this will stick with you as we go through it. It's just called Today and that is taken from Hebrews 3 7. It's actually the same scripture that we had for the last chapter but it's emphasizing the word today. So Hebrews 3 7 says, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, today, if you will hear his voice. And if you remember last time we were keying in on the Holy Spirit, hearing the Holy Spirit. Today we are keying in on the word today. So we'll just go ahead and plunge right in. Andrew says, Man is the creature of the moment. The past has gone from him. And over the future, he has no control. It is only the present moment that is his. Even as the Holy Ghost saith today, Satan's word is ever tomorrow. Man's favorite word, too. Even with the child of God, the word of unbelief is too often tomorrow. God's demand is too great for today. God's promise too high. We hope it will come easier later on. How, does that ring any bells? Does that resonate with anyone? So S Satan is always telling us about tomorrow. Tomorrow you can do this. You know, the great procrastinator. They say that, that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And I believe that's true. Because Satan will have you put off the things that you need to do. I was just hearing earlier someone teaching on when... I think it's in James, it talks about when you know the good thing to do and you do it not, it is sin to you. That is the sin of omission. And Satan will tell you, you don't need to do that right now. You don't need to read your Bible. You don't need to have, there's so many things you need to be attending to. Just have that quiet time with God later. Later. Or, you know, it, later never comes, right? It never comes. There's always going to be something else to fill the space of time. So when Jesus said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, remember that scripture? We are to seek God first and we are not to put that off. First is not later. So if we get that, <laughs> we get that in our minds. When God says first, he's not that this, he, Jesus didn't say, but seek later the kingdom of God. He, he didn't say that later will never come. All right. So here we go. Andrew says, today, it is a word of wonderful promise. It tells that today, this very moment, the wondrous love of God is for thee. It is even now waiting to be poured out into thy heart that today, all that Christ has done and is now doing, uh, doing in heaven and is able to do within thee this very day, it is within thy reach. Today, the Holy Ghost, in whom there is the power to know and claim and enjoy all that the Father and the Son are waiting to bestow, today, the Holy Ghost is within thee, sufficient for every need, equal to every emergency. Wow, what would it be like if we started our day with that kind of, you know, people put up little sticky notes on their mirror, these little positive affirmations. But what if you started the day connecting with God and you know, really zeroing in and focusing on the Holy Spirit. And you were like, you know, today, God, today's got promise. Today, God has all um, of the, the, bless, the blessings that come along with his, I'm trying to back up and look here, but all the blessings that come along with his presence in my life, everything he's got prepared, he wants to pour out in my heart today. And everything that Christ has done and is doing right now in heaven, and is able to do within me this very moment, this very day, all of that's within my reach. And today, the Holy Ghost, in whom there is the power to know and claim and enjoy all that the Father and Son are waiting to bestow. Today, the Holy Ghost is within me, sufficient for every need, equal to every emergency. And what if we just walked around thinking, yep, the Holy Spirit, he's sufficient for every need. He's equal to every emergency. What if we had that mentality? What if we faced every situation with that mentality? How would that change our walk with God? How would that change what we're able to do? How would that change our obedience? Instead of cowering in fear, every time, you know, I, I was going to say every time we turn on the news, but I don't turn on the news. But every time you turned on the news, 
and you saw fear, you just went, nope, I'm not watching any more of that. The Holy Ghost is equal to every emergency. He's sufficient for every need. I'm going to pray for what's going on for the people, the innocent people that are involved or the people being hurt or whatever. But I know that the Holy Spirit's in control. And if I just rely on Him, He's sufficient for every need. He says, with every call we find in our Bible to full and entire surrender, with every promise we read of grace for the supply of temporal and spiritual need, with every prayer we breathe and every longing that rules in our heart, there is the spirit of promise whispering today. Wow. He says, even as the Holy Ghost saith today, he goes on, Today it is a word of solemn command. It is not here a question of some higher privilege which you are free to accept or reject. That's another thing a lot of people forget that God has commands. He's not just He's not just kind of, you know, escorting you along, kind of putting his arm around you and let's, saying, let's go do this, let's go do that. Now there's times that God brings comfort to us. I'm not taking that away from him. But he says today if you hear his voice. It's not a suggestion. It's not for you to, like he says, to, you're free to accept or reject. It is not left to your choice, O believer, whether you will receive the fullness of blessing the Holy Spirit offers. That today of the Holy Ghost brings you under the most solemn obligation to respond to God's call and to say yes. Today, Lord, I complete and immediate submission to all thy will. Today, the surrender of a present and a perfect trust in all thy grace. I'm going to repeat that. So he's saying you're obligated to respond to God's call and to say, yes, today, Lord, complete. This is what you're saying to God. I'm going to give you complete and immediate submission to all your will. Today, the surrender of a present and a perfect trust in all thy grace. That's what we need to be saying to God. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to surrender to you. I'm going to submit to you and obey you. Even as the Holy Ghost saith today. Today, a word too of earnest warning. Even as the Holy Ghost saith today, if you shall hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Now this is very, very important. And when God gives a warning, He's not playing around. He's not just blowing smoke. This is, if you, if you miss everything else in this video today, please take this to heart. He says, they shall not enter into my rest. There is nothing so hardening as delay. When God speaks to us, he asks for a tender heart, open to the whispers of his voice of love. The believer who answers the today of the Holy Ghost with the tomorrow of some more convenient season, knows not how he is hardening his heart. The delay, instead of making the surrender and obedience and faith easy, makes it more difficult. Okay, I've got to, I got to really um, go back and, and talk about that. So a lot of times we are deceived into thinking and the devil will tempt us, but not, like I've said in a previous video, we can't just walk around, you know, blaming the devil. Um, he will tempt us. We have to be aware of our enemy and what he's doing. But he will tempt us and say, you don't want to do that right now. And, you know, later on after you've read your Bible or later on after you, you know, you maybe when you get things together a little better in your life, um, maybe you'll be able to do whatever it is that God's calling you to do. But, but don't do that today. Well, what you don't realize is when you're delaying obedience to God, then you are hardening your heart. I, I heard a long time ago, someone, you know, I was a new Christian and someone said this to me that delayed obedience is disobedience. So it transforms into obeying. Um, and, and I'm not saying you can't repent and then obey. But when you keep putting God off in that moment, you are disobeying him. So he, he's talking about how we're waiting for a more convenient time. Uh, and he said, instead of making the surrender obedience easy, it makes it more difficult. And then he goes on to say, it closes the heart for today against the comforter. 
and cuts off all hope and power of growth. So every time you delay against the will of God, against what he's telling you to do, oh, you know, you say, God says, why don't you go share the gospel with that person? And you say, oh, I just, I don't, I don't feel ready. I just, I don't have, I don't know what to say. And we have just hardened our heart against God. And he says, you're cutting off all hope and power of growth. You're coming against the comforter because the comforter, let's say he did tell you to go and witness to this person. And let's say that with every step of the way, you're trembling, you're scared. You're like, they're going to reject me. And they're, you know, all these thoughts of fear and rejection are coming upon you. Well, when you go and you walk in faith against all of that, you know who comes to your aid? The Holy Spirit. He's the comforter. He's going to strengthen you. And He's going to give you hope. He's going to give you the power of growth. Because once you step across that line and you go and do the thing that you were scared, what is it? Do it afraid? <laughs> you know, just surrender your fear to God and say, I'm just going to go and trust that when I, when I go over there, you're going to meet me. And, and it's going to be powerful. And He does. But you're cutting off what He wants to do. You're frustrating the will of God. O oh, believer, he says, even as the Holy Ghost saith today, so when you hear his voice, open the heart in great tenderness to listen and obey. Obedience to the spirits today is your only certainty of power and, and of blessing. Remember at the beginning we talked about how the only thing you have is today. You have no power or control over the future and the past you can't do anything about. So if you're not obeying when the Spirit says today, and He says, go and do, and when you're cutting that off, you're cutting off your only certainty of power and blessing. Um, and I, I can say, for, as I have walked in obedience, just in that one example about going to witness to people, it has been nothing short of amazing. I can't even put into words the, the things that have happened uh, so many stories, so many, every time too, when I just, just went ahead and told the gospel to someone, knowing that the Holy Spirit told me to do that and would meet me where I felt lacking in my own self. He has met me in extremely powerful ways. And I came away going, I was, I was just so blessed. And I really can't think of a greater blessing than when you have obeyed the Holy Spirit. And, and you, the, one of the biggest blessings you come out with is you feel more, you, you, it's a new step. You've gone to a new level with God. And not to say that the next time you probably feel some fear, you probably feel some, but it's, you're going to be more strengthened every time because you're growing. All right. So he says to all Christians whose life has been one of feebleness and of failure, who have not yet entered into the rest of faith, into God's own rest. This word today is the key to all their disappointments and to all their failures. Wow. So if you want, you're trying to figure out what is my problem? I never seem to get things together when it comes to my faith. I just can't get it right. This, he says, is the key. This word today. That's the key to all your disappointments and to all of your failures. You waited for strength to make obedience easier, for feeling to make the sacrifice less painful. It, listen to the drama here and the, and the selfishness, self-centeredness. You waited for strength to make obedience easier. Like, eh, you know, I'm not going to do that right now. I wonder who's whispering that in your ear. Like, yeah, don't do that now. Wait till you're stronger. <laughs> and you've waited for the feeling. Oh, you know, I don't, I just don't feel... Like I'm able to go and share the gospel or whatever it is God's telling you to do. I just don't feel it. Well, it's not about you feeling. It's about you obeying. God didn't, he didn't say, you know, he, he's not, God is not interested in how you feel. I mean, look at the Ten Commandments. He's like, these are commands. It, it doesn't matter if you feel in the, in the Lord's Prayer. It doesn't matter if you feel like a, a forgiving someone. You just do it. But if you're waiting for feeling, I've told people on that very point on forgiveness, if you're waiting for a feeling to come over you where you're like, yeah, I need to forgive that person, you might be waiting a long time. Because the feelings, 
And if you if you go back and watch my uh, series on the humility, we talk about this. Like feelings are not supposed to drive your train. They're not supposed to be at the. They're supposed to be the caboose. You know, they're supposed to be following your actions and your actions according to Romans twelve two. When you you're to renew your mind to the um, to the Word of God, and then God will transform you. And when your mind is renewed, then your will follows the mind, and then the feelings follow that. So, in other words, if you forgive someone, even though you don't have the feeling, you have the sincerity. You're trying to do what God wants, but you don't have that emotional feeling that oh, I, I just want to you know I want to go and forgive this person. You go ahead and forgive them. You make up your, you get renewed in your mind. Your will will follow that and put it into action. And then the feelings will come later. All right. So he says, you waited to make the sacrifice less painful. For the, You wanted the feeling to be there so the sacrifice wouldn't be as painful. Just like with forgiveness. Like if you, you're waiting for this feeling to overwhelm you. So you go and forgive and to make it less painful. No, just go and obey. Pain or not, no pain. He says, you did not listen to the voice of God breathing through every word. Today, you thought it meant for the sinner a call to immediate repentance. You did not know that it means for the believer each time he hears the voice, immediate wholehearted submission to all God says. Immediate trustful acceptance of all he gives. And yet just this is what it does mean. So he's saying it's not that one time thing of repentance where you got born again. This is ongoing until we until we go to be with Jesus in heaven. The entering into the rest of God, the perfect cleansing of the conscience in the blood through which he entered into the presence of God, our access within the veil into the presence of God, the being brought close to the very heart of God, the being taken up and kept in Christ in the love of God, these blessings are all ours. So I'm going to, I'll repeat those. So the blessings that he, he's gotten for us. Oh, let me, let me tell you this. He says, and over each of them is written the words, Now is the accepted time, even as the Holy Ghost saith today. So this is the blessing of obedience today. The entering into the rest of God. The perfect cleansing of the conscience in the blood through which he entered. Jesus entered into the presence of God. Our access within the veil into the presence of God. The being brought close to the very heart of God. The being taken up and kept in Christ in the love of God. Those are all blessings of, of saying today, yes God, I will obey today. He says, let our faith simply listen to God's voice until it rings through our soul day by day and all the day. We shall take God's word today and make it our own. We shall meet this wonderful today of God's love with the confident today of our faith. And it will become to us a foretaste of that eternal today in which he dwells. And he closes with this. Just yesterday, I heard a servant of God testify that at his conversion, he was led to say, I am going to do the will of God today without thinking of tomorrow. And he had found the unspeakable blessing of it. Let anyone begin to live a wholehearted life by the grace of God for one day. For tomorrow will be as today and still better. So let that be my challenge to you today and to myself that I'm going to do the will of God today without thinking of tomorrow. And let me add this. None of us are promised tomorrow. Today is the, all we have. Today is the gift of God to us right now to obey and to further his kingdom. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope that I will see you in the next episode.